got it. Okay. Michelle, can you confirm for me that you see slide five right now? Slide, slide two. Somebody just said they can only see slide one. Oh dear. Okay. Split screen. Mm hmm. Okay. Let me try again. What do we see now? Just uh, the beginning. Really? Yeah, the breakdown. It's not in present. Yeah, not in presentation mode yet. Okay. But I'm looking at slide there. I see slide five now. Okay. So weird. I'm so sorry. Okay. So I don't want to mess up. I'll keep I'll keep it where I'm at. Um, but if anybody missed that too, we can absolutely send um, these slides out as well. Um, so getting more into so I talked about the low profile, how we can link um, three systems up and have a total of six um, filtration um, spaces. We also looked at ease of use, so throughput ease of use, um, productivity. So we scaled back, no pun intended, on the weight measurement. So we took that out of the, the current um, Milliflex Oasis. Um, so there's also quick connects. So I um, can just quick connect my drain tubing as well as my power source. Did my slide advance? It did. Yay, OK. Um, and we also improved the Milliflex Oasis funnel. So we looked at our previous funnel to design the Milliflex Oasis funnel. We changed the um, transparency of the funnel materials. So now you can see through um, the, the funnel material to see what you're actually filtering. Um, added the level indications um, and also incorporated a hinged lid. And we'll get into why that's convenient in a little bit too. And then the funnel separation. So this is probably the um, one of the biggest changes in the in the workflow as far as convenience goes. So previously you had to take your funnel off the pump, um, press it onto the auger cassette, and kind of really snap it. So much so that we had a device called the Milla Snap that did it for you. Um, now it's really just kind of pinching it and it pops right off. So really taking the ergonomics into, into um, you know, into designing of the product and really making it a lot more simple for everybody. So we still have that touch-free um, device. So we don't need to transfer the membrane. There's no four steps that are needed to transfer a membrane. If you've done other manifold testing um, in the past or are currently doing it now even, so there's no forceps that you um, need. The um, base of the funnel is incorporated into the funnel. So when we put that on the um, filter hub, that's the only part that gets left behind. So we leave behind um, after filtration the convex shape of our membrane that comes in contact with our media.
We also have a unique um, sealed membrane. So the membrane is integrated into the base of the funnel. There's again no manipulation in that membrane and it has the largest uh, effective filtration area, um, filtration surface. So this also aids in fast filtration, uh, minimizes, you know, if you have high bio burden potential, minimizes any potential colony overlap, allows you to see everything on the grid a little bit better. Um, it's better for um, the more difficult to filter samples. And also for any, if anybody's doing any um, rinse fluids as well afterwards, get the whole surface area. So we also have a um, disinfectant um, accessory that can be, that can come with our pump. So it, um, supports the membrane, um, and if we wanted to, to disinfect the inside and the internal workings of the pump, um, we do have a qualified monthly decontamination unit. We've actually um, done some studies on it. We have um, a poster we'd be happy to send um, that we presented at the PDA last year um, on the disinfection and, the, and how um, we validated that monthly qualification. So you can still, of course, autoclave the pump head, but you know if you're keeping it in your laminar flow hood, um, there can be other things you can do. As far as the um, support design of the um, filtration head, it has a, um, a check valve within the filtration head to make sure that fluid only goes downwards towards the drain. There's no um, way that any fluid can come back up through through the membrane. Am I still advancing okay, Michelle? You are. You're all cool. good. Okay, good. Um, and then on to our media plates. So our media cassettes. We have, um, if you are using basically any media, you know that a lot of media, the media itself, kind of looks like the same color. So we've into, incorporated a color coding um, design into our media. So we've got different colors to represent TSA, SCA, and R2A. So there will be no confusion if you're doing multiple, um, using multiple media types for your various samples. We do have a one-year shelf life on most of the formulations. Um, we are validating the um, four to 25 room uh, temperature storage. And then once the bag is opened, that particular media sleeve, here, on right here. Boop, boop. Um, this can be stored for um, additional seven days. Great. So there is a different closure on the, um, the plate lid too. There's no need for tape. All the plates are stackable. Um, you know, you can drop them. I wouldn't recommend dropping them, of course, but they're pretty secure. Once that lid is locked in place, um, you can you can um, stack them on top of each other, put them in the incubator on the tray and go. And since they're color coded, it'll make it even easier to make sure you put them in the right incubator. So a couple other things too, of course we do quality testing. So we do integrity testing on every single um, filtration unit. We do growth promotion testing on um, all of our media using the Pharmac Appeal strains. And this is all on our um, certificates of analysis um, with all of our physical tests and our growth promotion tests. And then finally, traceability. So traceability is definitely something that has been highly incorporated and everybody has a need for. Um, so we have really looked at how people are um, determining their needs for traceability in the lab as far as these samples go and made that hopefully as easy as possible. So we um, have color coded labels, the labels on our um, Packaging can actually come off so that we can affix those labels to, um, you know, a notebook or some other one of our worksheets. If we're using paper, we can um, scan everything with our limb system. So everything is barcoded um, that can go right into our limb systems. Um, and all of our information is on every component. So our filter units, our uh, media cassettes and the outer packaging as well. 
So barcodes everywhere. <laughs> so in the end, um, we do have our services too. So if you are starting up and you are, you know, just interested in, okay, what's the next step? What do I need to do as far as getting from looking at this instrument up into um, installation and qualification? So we have offer training. Um, we offer our IQ, OQ protocols and services. So we have technicians that will come to your site and actually um, execute the IQ OQ for you. Um, once everything, once we're all, all everything is uh, all set and we're all healthy again. We also offer method development. So we have an applications lab here, actually in Burlington, Massachusetts, where we can um, develop method developments for you. We also offer the preventative maintenance and um, requalification of instrumentations. So full services for everything that we offer in biomonitoring, especially the milliflex oasis. All right. So that is. Let me stop sharing that real quick. OK. So I'm seeing a few questions. We will get to those. Tim and I are answering as we go. Oh, I see you. You guys are great. All right. <laughs> and hopefully we got over our technical hurdles. OK. Mm -hmm. Good. The PowerPoint is still up and we need to convert it to your <laughs> camera now. Of course it is. OK. And can we enlarge your screen so that it encompasses the whole? Uh, or is that on our end? I think that's on your end. Is it still all split up? It is. Hmm. Mm -hmm. hmm. One second. Let me see how I can do this. Like full screen, maybe something there. Um, hmm. And I, I see it on one yeah, one sure. of four quadrants on mine, so I think it's big enough to see the demo if you click on the video. Yeah, I don't know how to. I'm trying to figure out how to shut everybody else's faces off. Oh, you know what? I think if you click on mine and hit pin, there's a little pin that will come up. Nope. OK. Sorry, everybody. It worked. It worked. It worked? 
Yeah. If you hit the pin, yeah. you have to press and hold it, and then pin comes up, and then it makes it the whole screen. Okay. I mean, but I'm on an iPad, so there's another way to do that. Maybe click it on a computer. I can't pin myself for some reason. That makes no sense. Okay, well, if that works, hopefully that'll... Let's just... Yep, click on the pin. All right, so people are getting it. Cool. Okay. All right, voila! So here is um, the Milliflex Oasis pump. So first, what I want to show everybody is kind of where we started. So these are the older filtration units. So you can see previously, oh, people are saying they don't see anything. Oh, that's, ah. Uh. Show us I don't get it. That's what hey, Ann? Yes. What you do is you go into, uh, when you when you look at the, the, the meeting bar where it shows video, where you show your audio, if you're joining with us, you can say show participants. That's the little people icon next to the hang up icon. Please don't yep. press the hang up icon. Hit show participants and then yep. it will show Ann's name. And yep. under those three dots under Ann's name is a pin. So you have to be able to show participants. That's the what people probably aren't seeing. Yeah, I don't have that. Yes, that worked for me. No. We, yeah, if you exactly what what Tim just said. If you if you click on the participants, you'll see Anne is at the top. You can pin her and she becomes the full screen. Just a hover over over Anne and the three dots like Tim said. OK, I see more people saying that works. All right, good. Boop, boop, boop. OK, back to where I was. OK, so previously on the Milliflex Plus pump, we had the one thing we had to use forceps for were to use this spacer and place it on our pump head and put the Milliflex uh, filtration unit on top of it. Now, you don't have to do that. So I use that whole tray for just that. <laughs> So now that our packaging is a little bit different. Well, this already on this one. Open. So instead of having everything kind of on one tray in a grid, I technically have two little trays. So all of my filtration units, ignore these blank spaces, I already use these ones. All these filtration units sit on this um, eight place tray, which can actually detach and become stacked. The other thing to note on the outside of the packaging is where we have all, all of our information. So this is where we talked about the traceability. So here I've got my Milflex Oasis funnel, 100 mils, the composition, mixed cellulose ester, 0.45 microns, white gridded. I've got my um, catalog number, lot number, expiration date, and then I've got all these little barcode labels here. So I can peel this right off. Whoop. I can peel this right off and put it wherever I need to in my documentation. I even have these nice little instructions here that tell me what to do. So now I have my filtration units. So right now I've got four filtration units on one tray that again can be stacked. My filtration base is already integrated into the base of my filtration unit. Oop, <laughs> pop it off. 
and I've got my hinge lid. So the other neat thing about my hinge lid that becomes important later is that it comes off, but it's hinged for convenience when I'm filtering. I've got my graduated markings. If you can see this, my gridded uh, filter membrane, and it's all put together and I have my larger filtration area. So this is the Oasis unit. Um, kind of colorful, got some pretty lights here, easy to touch, pretty lightweight. So we have two filtration heads. They come off, they can be autoclaved. We have our check valve inside. We also have line markups, if you can see this, so I can make sure that I place my um, filtration unit on correctly. These bands here, so these are green. I've got different colored bands if I need to identify my filtration units for any particular type of test that I want to do. They come off. And go back on. So now I can add my, um, attach my filtration unit. And I can match it up so that I can see my graduation. The reason why there's a blue background here is so that I can see my graduation, um, my my um, uh, liquid volume on the on the back side. So I have my um, formulation of phosphate buffer and my iced tea mix for colors. <laughs> So now I can pour in about 100 mils, flip that over. I don't need to touch anything. I can just knock the back of it. And once I see that everything's been filtered, I stop, I do my dry out cycle and I'm good. So here I have my uh, media cassettes. So our, oh, excuse me. Again, our packaging, new packaging. I can see all my labels. So just the same as I showed you in the filtration units, this, these are my media cassettes, um, have the same labels. Now I have this color coding. So this particular box has R2A I know this because my R2A plates are blue. So again, have all my information here. I have my labels that can peel off, whether I need to just scan that or put it somewhere else where I need to identify what lot that I used. Okay, so I still have my filtration unit on here. So now I want to, and first I'll demonstrate the difference here. So I have my older empty Milliflex cassette, my previous version uh, Milliflex funnel. So all we had to do, or might still have to do if you have this, is once I'm done filtering, I place, place the membrane on my cassette, Ooh. snap, then detach. We don't need to do that right now. Yes. We have a request uh, from Michelle to show the lids on the media cassettes. The lids on the media cassettes. Yeah, just like that. Yep. Cool. Clear lid. Doop. Which unfortunately becomes trash real quick. <laughs> so, yep, clear lid on the media cassettes. Yeah, so Michelle, when you're doing growth promotion, you can do growth motion on these plates. You would utilize this lid um, and you can, as long as it's not coming in contact with the media, of course, and you should be able to clearly see any um, microbes that grow on there. So I've got my media. This particular formulation is TSA. I don't know if you can see that, but it does say TSA. I have Max Bree. I have my um, information on there as well as my um, scanning label. So now I can take off my 
funnel. And what's left behind is my filtration base, my filter base. I'll get to that in a second. So you saw how I had to push down pretty significantly to snap this membrane off. Now I'm pressing this on because I want that convex shape to become to come in full um, contact with the media. I simply squeeze this a little bit, it pops right off. And another nice thing about the hinge lid, you can see I just did that with one hand, goes right on top of that media cassette. So that is my filtered unit, my membrane filter on top of my media cassette. So if I'm doing multiple samples, I can stack these media cassettes. They're pretty secure. So now I've got this um, filter base kind of left behind. There's a handy little tool for that. I don't need to touch this. I can disinfect this, push this on here, pop it right off. That um, removes my um, filtration base for there. Um, oh. The other thing I talked about was our connections. So we've got our power cord plugs right in. We've got our quick connect drain connection just snaps right in here. So very, very easy to use. I don't need to line anything up really to plug into the back of here. Um, I think make sure I don't miss anything. Nope, I think I got everything. <laughs> and 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 just so everybody knows again verbally, I put it in the chat box. This video will be available and we'll send it out to people. So you'll, if you're not seeing the video now, you'll see the video. You can see the video later. Yep. Oh, I see somebody that said, can you, you push the bottom of the filter onto the media? Yeah, let me show that again. So I've got my media cassette. And I've got my filter that I'm assuming that I had already filtered with. And kind of just presses on there. I need to take unhinge my lid a little bit. There we go. Just press those together and then put my lid back on, my hinge lid back on. <laughs> yes, we do have 250 mil funnels too. So um, if there's any questions, um, again, feel free to put them in the chat. I'm already seeing all these questions um, come up. Again, this will be shared with everybody. Um, I hope everybody got a little bit of a break in their day, whether you're in the office or in the lab or in your pajamas like I was yesterday. Um, I hope that this, um, you know, is something to do for, for a little while. Um, and again, we'll be, we'll be reaching out. If you have any questions, feel free to um, directly email myself, um, Michelle, Tim, your local application specialists. We're here to help. We are all working. Um, and so I guess we'll we'll look and see um, if there's any other questions right now too. Is there any questions that we haven't gotten to yet, Tim and Michelle? Yeah, and why don't you talk about the um the disinfection process again. So that is a uh, disinfectant um, attachment where you uh, it's an, a special um, specialized accessory that attaches onto the top of the filtration head. It is also stainless steel where there's a um, valid validated procedure where you add your selected disinfectant um, and it actually will cycle through and run through the the internal mechanism of, of the of Oasis pump. The the um, the new system comes with a, a very nice um, chart on cleaning and maintenance. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, what's really nice is that um, we don't, we've been able to validate that only once a month do you have to do that, that sanitization that Ann was just mentioning. Um, it's a very simple process. It only takes about 15 minutes to accomplish. Um, and again, all this information we can provide, um, please reach out to us. I just loaded up our, our emails for Ann, for Tim, and for myself. You can reach out to us directly or to your sales rep, and we can provide you all of that information. I'm seeing that question again. There are 250 ml um, funnels. Yeah, that's the question. Yeah. Yes, 250, yes. So do we need to clean the pump head with IPA wipes between each sample? So Michelle or Tim, that what's our recommendation yep. on that? Like, so yes, right. That, that is a, um, it's, it's your own preference whether you, you need to do that. The way the current um, funnel is designed, the way we've designed it is that the, there is with the backflow and the, the check valve, there is no concern about any flow coming toward that membrane from the underside. And it also has a very um, uh, good separation, which gets disposed of each time. So no, you do not have to, but that's a preference uh, based on, on your own uh, feel good if you want to do it, but that is not required. I, I'm yeah. willing to bet that that's sort of a paradigm. I don't want to say paradigm shift. It's a different idea because people are so used to wiping that mm-hmm. it will probably be hard for your aseptic technique. It will be hard for you not to, but you don't have to. Um, Mike Doucette asks, can you discuss daisy chain or setting multiple units? So that's another thing. So I did mention in the presentation that one um, standard unit comes with two pump heads, but we can get up to six filtration um, pump heads. So this third connection right back here, um, there is an additional cord where we can daisy chain these and link them together with um, additional Oasis pumps and get up to six without compromising filter performance or get up to three pumps and six filtration heads without um, compromising filter performance. And I saw Michelle answered our other question. Yes, you can stack up to six cassettes on a tray. That was the one thing I think I missed. So the cassettes can actually be inverted and incubated on the same tray that the fil- that the filter funnels came on. Hey, Ann, can you show the, the, uh, the, the membrane on top of the media a little bit closer? Yeah. Good. Can you turn it over? Can you turn it over? Just so that people can see what it looks like. Yeah. Yep. I didn't line up my labels very well, but there's the label on the cassette and the label that was left behind on the filtration unit. Um, and Cyril asked if do the units connect to each other, and I told him yes, um, but I don't think we have a picture of that. But I think you had a picture in your presentation, right? I did. Yeah. So in our in our documentation, we have a picture of it connecting with the electronic cord. I don't think we have a picture of the drains connecting with the T with the plastic T's. Yeah. So there you go. That's the, it. The drains connect with the T. Yep. And can you talk about how they you can filter multiple heads with one touch? That's a multiple heads with one touch. I don't know if I understand that. If, if, yeah, I'm not sure. yeah I, I understand. I understand the question. If you if you daisy chain three units together and you place the funnels on the six heads, 
you can double pump, triple pump on the on the one um, start button and all of the units will start at the same time so that you don't have to keep pressing each one. Um, it's just something that uh, we thought would be um, uh, of uh, comfort to reduce repetitive uh, actions. Mm -hmm. Yep, so it is compatible with the Milliflex Quantum, which is the rapid addition to the, the Milliflex um, family. What is the type of electrical plug that is on the power supply? So it's a four pin um, plug. There is a question about the spacer. Why isn't it needed? Um, oh, it's, yeah. It's no longer needed so, because each, each, yeah, go ahead, show that. Go ahead. Yeah, let me find it. Oh. So these are our two spacers, the old spacer, which was basically just a mesh spacer, and the new spacer that comes on the, um, oh, I broke it. Uh, Well, it comes on the bottom of the, the filtration unit. So now this spacer is here. This is the part that gets left behind. So it's a spacer and a drain kind of built into one. And I see calibration of the unit. There is no calibration of the unit. There's nothing to really calibrate anymore. There's no... Um, internal weight system because there is no automatic filtration anymore where it previously used the weight balance. So there's no need to calibrate. I would recommend sanitization prior to use just because it gets delivered to your uh, facility in a box and in our packaging. How do you count growth on the media with the bottom of the filter? The bottom of the filter. Okay, so I think if this is what you mean, so any colonies that you get should be on the top of the filter. So um, use that hinge lid that was on the filtration unit that's clear. So this would be where your colonies would be growing. And I think what some people are asking is they would they if they wanted to direct inoculate the media without doing membrane filtration for growth promotion. Oh, OK. Yeah. So that would just be this cassette, which has a clear lid. Once you take this clear lid off, you would do your traditional um, spread plate inoculum. Some people do either, some people will do membrane filtration or direct inoculation. You could certainly do membrane filtration with your organisms to do a growth promotion. Yep, could do that too. Mm -hmm. The latest question, Anne, is um, the stain. We don't have the quantum aspect for this demo. The quantum, mm. maybe that's a good idea for another another demo uh yep. how do you get the filter off the okay so christine for your question that quantum demo will probably have to happen um in the future and um I, we don't have a time frame for that just yet but it's a good idea okay but also christine the same idea we would have a removal rack that would remove the filter from the media same idea would apply it's not it's not going to be much different 
the parts are going to be a little different because the cassettes and the filter is different um, as far as like the mechanics of it. But using the quantum and the same idea is, is going to be it, pretty much the same. For the if you wish to do the rec the growth promotion, uh, we have funnels that that uh, come without the membrane, so you don't have to worry about uh, how to take that off. But it's, it allows you to um, perform the test that way. Mm -hmm. So regarding autoclaving the pump head, you certainly can. So the pump head does come off of the the. Um, the Oasis pump, so you can autoclave the, these if you do need to. But it's not required. Not required. Um, I believe there are three different colored rings available. You guys will notice that we've done a lot of colors and that was one of the things that came out of our interviews with people. We did colors for the rings for the autoclave for excuse me for the heads. We did colors for the pumps so that if you wanted to designate green for product and blue for water, you would know what those pumps are designated for in your lab. Just makes it a lot easier to know what you're working with. Mm -hmm. Um, Brit Brittany asks if the dry cycle happens automatically. Um, that does not happen automatically. Um, the user has to um, visually see that the liquid has gone through the membrane and then press the dry cycle. Mm -hmm. And it's and seconds. how long is that dry cycle? Five seconds? Yeah, yeah it's very, very short. Is there a little space on the media? There is just enough space, I would say, but using the hinge lid from a funnel gives you a little bit more right. um, head space, and I would say. Yeah, that's the kit. Oh. Yeah, that's how we would recommend to do growth promotion is to use that lid that you would normally use in a test. Yep. I wouldn't use the same lid with the media. I, that's not a recommended. Mm -hmm. Surreal, we do not sell the lid by itself. <laughs> um, could, we please let, could you please let go? me know which membrane yeah. will go? <laughs> go ahead. Yeah, which membrane will go with the recovery Milliflex Oasis filtration unit? For the recovery um, unit, there will not be a, a membrane. That is for doing growth promotion on the on the media. That's the kit. Mm -hmm. Jay, yes, the reader, the quantum reader still will need to be calibrated. Um, we have an in the field calibration or not calibration, excuse me, service kit, but I don't want to say, I'm not sure if we discontinued that service. Um, let me get back to you directly, Jay, about uh, calibrating that uh, quantum. Hmm. Great question, Vandana. We do have adapters for the microfill and the easy fit, uh, for the easy fit uh, devices, not for microfill. Um, so if you are a current user and you wish to use the easy fit, but would rather have this pump set up, you, we have the adapter for that. And then as you make the decision that you'd like to come over to Milliflex, you can just get a pump head to, to change that way also. And if you currently have the Milliflex Plus pump, and you'd like to have the new membranes, uh, the new filter funnel setup, we have adapters that enable you to do that because we know that our pumps are, are quite durable and not everybody wants to get rid of them quickly. Mm -hmm. 
Cyril, there's no need for the milli snap. The pump head sanitation process the same, so it is a little bit different. There's an additional um, device for sanitization. Um, I don't have it with me, unfortunately. Okay. So we're coming up on just about an hour. So um, if there's any other questions, um, feel free. I think I know Michelle sent our email addresses. I can send out a follow up email to all attendees um, with our additional contact information. Um, you can also go back to your application specialist. That is probably the person that forwarded you this meeting that hopefully you are already in contact with. Um, and so I will conclude by thanking everybody for joining. Thank you again for giving me a reason to throw normal clothes on today. <laughs> and um, it was it was really great to do this. I, I know we had some technical um, difficulties and a couple uh, technical issues, but I think over well overall it went OK. So um, I hope everybody learned something. I hope everybody um, enjoyed the conversation and um, thank you again for um, welcome or coming to our pilot session of our virtual uh, webinar demonstration and um, I will end that here and again I will follow up with everybody and um, there will be a link to this recording as well. Thank you Anne. Thank you.